every gift derives, we gather to worship you this day. You are an awesome God, greater than our comprehension or our imagination. You are beyond any word we could ever use to describe you. And yet, through Jesus, we know the intimacy of your love. We have come to you in thanksgiving and praise to know that you are God and to place our lives anew in your perspective. Enlarge our vision this hour with your word. Instill in us again your hope in place of our despair, your peace where our hatred threatens, your joy amidst our depression, your love overwhelming our apathy. May your Holy Spirit surround and indwell us, this congregation now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, our brother Mel will lead us in the call of worship. Good morning. The reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 23. If you look in your bulletins, you'll see the passages designated leader and congregation. <clears throat> Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we were also chosen, chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body the fullness of him who fulfills everything in every way. Amen. Good morning. Aren't we all happy to be here today? The splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice. Oh, my God. 
and all created things above all wisdom and all the ways of man you were here before the world began that's why he's so great you know there's no one who can stand next to him and lay these claims so let's let the demons know how we truly feel about him Above all powers, above all fear, above all danger, and all creativity, above all wisdom, and all the ways of heaven. Thank you. 
Crucified, made behind a stone. You live to die, rejected and alone. Like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me above all. My God, isn't that what our communion moments, isn't that what it's all about? He took the fall for us. My God. Let's welcome our brother Lou as he comes up to lead us in these moments. Um, boy, this brother is really passionate about the Lord. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. But before we go there, allow me to provide some background and setting to our text. The church at Corinth was experiencing a myriad of problems, and since Paul received a report from Chloe's people about the specific problem that threatened to derail the faith of the Corinthian church, in his response letter, Paul decided to tackle it first and meet it head on. The immediate issue was that threatening, the immediate issue threatening to derail the faith of the Corinthian church was to whom they belong and who they were actually following. This was the source of significant fights in the church. A church clearly divided, particularly on the subject and the source of their faith. Each one in the church was saying, I follow Paul, 
or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, who is Peter, or I follow Christ. In his intent on getting to the heart of the issue, in his goal to recalibrate their faith, and as a means of shaking them out of their carnal coma, Paul sought to wake them up with a bucket of cold facts in the form of three chilling questions. One, is Christ divided? Secondly, was Paul crucified for you? Third, or were you baptized into the name of Paul? Verses 12 to 13. Of course, the answer to these three questions is a resounding no. Yet Paul goes on. He tells them in verses 14 to, 14 to 16 that he thanks his God that he only baptized a few of them so that none of them can say that they were baptized into his name. Still, Paul was just getting started. And as a master craftsman who has done the prep work, Paul now starts to set the object, the object of their faith before them. But before he does that, he precludes it with a statement about the central purpose of his calling. Verse 17, verse 17. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. And now we come to our text for the morning. Verses 18 to 25. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the wise? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God the, word, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews, and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. The Apostle Paul here detonates a charge of Christian truth that showers the Corinthian church and us. So much so, it would take us much more time than what we have available to us to go through it all. But I must draw atten your attention to a few key points for the purpose of our communion moments. My first point, Paul's first point. Paul says that the gospel is the word of the cross. Second point, Paul says this word of the cross is foolishness, but only to those who are perishing. But why was the message of the cross foolishness to the unsaved Gentile Greeks? It was foolishness to the Gentile Greeks, the non-Jew then, for the same reasons it's foolish to us unsaved Gentile Bahamians now. Because they, like us, believed it was all a fable. Neither did, it, neither did it fit their own views of the way of elevating the condition of man, improving his station in life. Additionally, they saw no value or usefulness in this doctrine. No significance in the statement that a man of humble birth in Judea was put to death in a shameful manner to make people better or for them to receive pardon. They saw it all as foolishness. The third point that Paul makes. Paul says this foolishness in the sight of man is in fact God's wisdom. What is now the reality of God's wisdom in Christ was once its shadow at Edom in the book of, e in the book of Numbers 21 through verse 8, where the children of Israel grumbled against God and Moses, complaining that there was no bread and water, when indeed they had both in abundance. Then they added to their sin these words, We detest this food. So the serpents, which in the past had harmlessly coexisted with them in the wilderness, God now gave permission to sting and kill them with their venomous bites as punishment for their sin. But when they repented and begged Moses to ask God to take the snakes away, God told Moses to make a snake and lift it up on a pole so that anyone suffering from the venomous sting of the serpents could just look at God's atoning snake on the pole from anywhere in the camp of over one million people and live. Even back then, it would have appeared foolish 
but only to those who were perishing by refusing to look at God's atoning snake on the pole. So it is today. God's wisdom and power in the person of Christ is the atoning sacrifice for the sting of sin in everyone who looks on him and believes, no matter where they are in this concentration camp of sin we now call the world. Paul's fourth point. Paul says we, the apostles, preach Christ crucified. They didn't, they didn't give in to the pressures of public's felt need and preach the gospel of prosperity. Nor did they declare the message of increase, which too empties the cross of Christ of its power by ignoring the central atoning message of the gospel. In fact, Paul says elsewhere in Galatians 1.8, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. Consequently, lifting up the snake on the pole as, as a means of atonement was indeed the shadow of the reality, the reality that is Christ. And we too lift him up in our preaching when we preach Christ crucified. Paul's fifth point. Paul concedes that this message is a stumbling block to the Jew. But why was Christ crucified a stumbling block to the Jews? It was because the Jews looked for a triumphant and glorified Messiah. But this Jesus is a contradiction. He was of humble birth. In fact, poverty stricken from Judea, not Jerusalem. He was a bastard by some account. And in their view, having been justly slain by the providence of God and treated with divine contempt by a man of death commonly known only to slaves and prisoners, it was inconceivable to the Jews that this man, Jesus, was not only the Messiah, but the only means of atonement. This is a stumbling block to the Jews, even today. Stumbling block, because, stumbling block being the Greek word scandalon meaning anything in the way over which one may fall than anything contemptible that gives offense. There is no doctrine more offensive to the Jews than the Messiah crucified and that this man, Jesus, is the Messiah. It is scandalous! Absolutely scandalous. I ask you, is this doctrine scandalous to you as well? Are you among those who find it offensive in our modern times? Because you believe there are many paths to God? Paul knew this offense intimately. Because he himself was a Jew. And even more than a Jew, a Pharisee. A Pharisee who became an apostle. Born not just premature, but late. As he himself puts it, out of due season. Paul in this regard was very much like us. He was very much like me, wishing he had come to Christ earlier than he had to avoid the crimes of sin and not miss out on the prizes of Christ. So Paul missed out on the last supper with Jesus and the twelve, born out of due season, the night that he was betrayed. And since Paul himself said that he counted everything he had, both material and immaterial, as dung, refuse, for the sake of knowing Christ Jesus his Lord. I'm convinced that Paul would have given anything to be there at the Last Supper to see those things and hear these words as represented in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, 20, chapter 26, verses 26 to 28. Now as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it. Drink of it. All of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And what is it exactly that we should remember in these communion moments, in these commemorations, as living memorials? We must remember Christ himself and the atoning sacrifice of his death once and for all. And being mindful of the atoning sacrifice of his death for the venom of sin, it should cause us believers who are being saved to abstain from sin and not crucify the Son of God afresh. Knowing the high price 
that was paid for us. Because not only did Christ die for us, even more significantly, he died in our place. He died in a place that was reserved for us. It is our custom here that if you are not a believer, we humbly ask that you allow the emblems to pass you by. Yet we are hopeful and we pray that sometime soon, even today, God may call you to join us in our remembering Christ in this way. Brother Stuart. The words of this song that will encourage us as we receive the communion. This is my daily bread, written by Pastor Hannah for our encouragement, sung to the tune of This is the Air I Breathe. Pay close attention to the words because they're not all committed to us. This is the prayer I need. This is the prayer I need. Your sacred body broken for me. This is a cup I drink. This is a cup I drink. This is a cup I drink. Your precious love.
Thank Brother Lou for articulating that so clearly for us today. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ died, Christ buried, Christ rose from the dead. And I trust that there's no one here who's stumbling with that truth. They're keeping you away from salvation through Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the gospel message. We thank you for your son's body that was bruised and broken for every single one of us. 
For those who are stumbling over that fact today, Father, we pray they would come alive in their hearts. And for those who have come to know that truth and are placing their faith firmly in Jesus Christ today, we thank you for the opportunity to trust you at Christ, for the fact that we have salvation because of the sacrifice made by our Lord and Savior. To all of us, we say thank you. We honor you. We glorify you. As we eat this body, help us to appreciate that fact afresh. And as we drink this wine, we pray that you would help us to appreciate how the life flowed from the body through the blood, that we've been healed and we've been strengthened, continuing to strengthen us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we eat? Amen. At this time, we'd like to welcome our visitors. We're honored that you have chosen to worship with us today, and we trust that you will be encouraged and spiritually refreshed in the Lord. All of our guests are invited to complete our visitors' questionnaire. Seems we have a list of visitors. So we'd like to welcome to our service today, Amy Samuels. You don't necessarily have to stand, only if you want to, but just want to acknowledge you. Stand. Okay, we would like for you to stand. <laughs> uh, we've got Amy Samuels. Okay. Wilsonique Nielsen, I think. <clears throat> This is very good handwriting. Uh, we'd like to welcome the Buddhas. Budu. 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 The Southworths. And Christian Palatius. Is that right? Thank you very much for joining us today. I'm sorry if I had trouble with your names. Um, But we pray that you have been enjoying the service and that your worship has been meaningful. Okay. Okay, Grace. At this time, we're going to do our scripture verse to remember. Okay, so today we move on to a new verse. It's found in... Can we have it up on the board, please? It's found in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. Okay, let's read through it once, and then I want to talk a little bit about it. So, where is it found? 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted... He will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Now, do you remember from Brother Lou's presentation, he spoke a bit about what was happening with the Corinthian church. And as we can see, they had a lot of problems. Some of the problems they had, as he said, they had divisions, they had jealousy, quarreling, they, had, they were misusing their spiritual gifts. They were arrogant. There was sexual immorality. They had lawsuits against one another. And they had some problems with food that was being sacrificed to idols. And what's amazing about this list is that you find even in our churches today, we have many of these same things. Nothing has changed. Perhaps that's why it says that no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. But what is also interesting is that if you start from verse 1 of that chapter, he speaks about Israel. Some of the same things. They were caught up in adultery, pagan revelry, sexual immorality, 
and they tested the Lord, and they grumbled against him. My Lord, we suffer from these very same things today. But what I find interesting is that he gives us some fair warning in two verses before it. And he actually uses the Israelites as an example for us. not be as fast as a iPod. <clears throat> but he says, these things happen to them, he's referring to the Israelites, as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has become. And then in verse 12, so if you think you are standing firm, you hear that? If you think you are standing firm. Be careful that you don't fall. So if you're suffering with these same temptations, be careful what you think you're standing on. So let's say this verse one more time, and let's remember those things. Where is it found? 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. How will he provide a way out? You better seek him. Continue to be in his word. And in worship, always. <coughs> okay, we're going to have Pastor Adam. We've been very fortunate at Grace Community Church to be joined by many persons from one of the great, great countries of the Caribbean. Now let me ask you, I want, to, I want to just see by categories, because I really want you to appreciate this moment. If you went to school and experienced or uh, if you went to school, meaning from the Bahamas, if you went to school in Jamaica, your Bahamian who went to school in Jamaica. Please stand. Uh, uh, some of you may not have gotten it because some of you always should be standing. If you were a Bahamian and you went to school in Jamaica, part of your education, all of your education in Jamaica, please stand. Oh, they just stood. Okay, good. Who is that, Carol? Oh, brother, brother Herbie. Oh, oh, different, yeah, different guest. Okay. Now, if, as a Bahamian, you were taught by a Jamaican teacher at some point in your education. Please stand. Okay, pl please be seated. Brother Cyril, Sister Helen, and I, all of us who went to Prince Williams, at one point I think all of our teachers were Jamaican and Helen and great teachers. 
great teachers now now some of y'all might be a little scared to stand because you know they're just looking around but if you love reggae music stand if you love reggae music stand You just love that rubber dub style. <laughs> Listen. Huh? What? Now. Now I can say now. As 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 the the uh, the 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 fellow who is saying um got my mind made up say. Now if you from Jamaica, or if your parents were from Jamaica, or if your parents' parents from Jamaica, please stand. <laughs> All right, please. Grace is a moment. The reason why we just, the reason why we just, just so I could give everybody a chance to stand for Jamaica. If you like parties, please stand. All right, now take care, everybody. Y'all sit down. Okay, I see. I see. I don't start a whole Jamaica cultural revolution and discussion in here. Well, I just want to say. Or hot parties. All right. No, the, the time to stand is over now. Except for all of our Jamaica brothers and sisters that worship or fellowship here at Grace, I want you to please stand and I want you to remain standing. Please stand. All of my Jamaican brothers and sisters. Let's give them a hand. Now, you know it's more than this, but half of them are on vacation right now. But ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we wanted to pause is because those from Jamaica that fellowship with us has added so much to this fellowship. And we want you to know how deeply we appreciate you and the country that you hailed from. But there's a reason why we are singling you out this morning. It is because tomorrow, Jamaica will celebrate its 50th birthday. A very special birthday for Jamaica. And because that's such a special birthday to your country, and even though sometimes we will seriously claim y'all, we appreciate the diversity, the depth, the cultural experience that you so liberally share with us here at Grace. And because it's a special birthday for Jamaica, we just want to say a prayer for Jamaica. So you stand on behalf of Jamaica while I ask Pastor Lyle to come and just say a prayer for Jamaica on its 50th birthday. I want every Jamaican standing right now on behalf of Jamaica in the gap for Jamaica as Pastor Lyle leads us in this prayer. And I just want to say to you, happy birthday. A powerful impact. You've had in our church, in our uh, nation, and you're going to be having in the Olympics. And it's already started. You know, sadly, sadly, some people in this country give Jamaicans a bad name. But I'm grateful for the crew that I'm looking down here who have continued to make an excellent example, to make up for all the bad examples out there. And we're grateful to God that you made Grace your home. 
and you continue to enrich the body life of grace. And uh, we're so grateful that as a church, we seem to uh, attract black, white, rich, poor, Jamaican, uh, Vincentian, uh, Trinidadian. I mean, they all seem to make their way to grace. God is doing something special in Grace Community Church. We pray that that would continue. But it's about you today. It's about Jamaica today, and so let's, uh, let's pray for Jamaica. If you're standing near one of our Jamaican countrymen, uh, just go ahead and touch him, or uh, you can stand your hand towards as though you're laying a hand on his shoulders. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, for the great nation of Jamaica that has, in a sense, like we say in our national anthem, marked the manner of its bearing. We ask, Lord, that your blessings would continue to flow to this country, a country that knows what it believes and what it stands for, that continues to fight for its morality on a public stage, though there are those that would seek to vilify them and say, change your laws. Jamaica continues to stand strong in saying, we're not for this, we're not for that, and we won't have it. We pray, Lord, that that strength would continue. We pray for Jamaica's leaders. We recognize uh, just a year and a bit ago there was that whole um, episode with Dudas Koch and, and, and the uh, shame that was bringing to an otherwise great nation. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to clean this nation's image before the public. We thank you that they are having and will continue to have this week, we can anticipate, a powerful witness by means of their athletes who, Lord, are never uh, held up as being guilty of some performance-enhancing drugs, but, Lord, who do it the natural way, papaya and other things that add to their prowess and strength. Lord, we thank you for their ongoing impact in the country of the Bahamas through means of teachers, through means, Lord, of good spouses, and, Lord, uh, through good church membership as we've experienced here at Grace. We want to turn our prayers to the ambassador in this country as he would continue to bring about good relations between the Bahamas and Jamaica. And, Lord, for the J Jamaican country itself, for Jamaica, as it goes into its 50th anniversary of independence, Lord, I pray that you would cause the nation and its leaders and its people to take moments to self-reflect and say, what will we be as a nation? What do we want the world to know us for? May this be a year of deep reflection and uh, decisions being made in terms of its tourism strategy, in terms of its educational uh, emphasis, in terms of all that it's doing. Continue, Lord, to strengthen Jamaica, to stand as a beacon light of what is right. Help them, Lord, as there are challenges around the world. Uh, we think of the U.S. determination to make all of the Caribbean nations recognize same-sex marriage. Thank you for Jamaica's ongoing uh, attitude. It will not happen in this country. Uh, continue, Lord, to give them that kind of strength and fortitude on all issues, uh, on all moral issues. And now, Lord, for these here in our flock, we pray that as they are away from their homes and have made their home here among us, may we as a church continue to receive them well, uh, to bring them deeper into our fellowship and cause them to enjoy their time away from home as though they were home right now. Bless each and every one. Strengthen them as only you can. Help them to be that beacon light wherever they are as they move about not just in this country, but around the world. To this end, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, our brother Naldo is going to come up with a few announcements. Hello, good afternoon, church. Okay, um, are you enjoying the service so far? Do you think the young, young adults have a shot of doing this again? All right, good. Um, I'm going to bring a couple announcements for you. Um, 
first and foremost, I'm going to direct you to the bulletin where I'm going to be pulling this, these announcements from. Um, first, I'd like to highlight the Grace Summertime activities. Now, we've had a couple of activities already for the month, I mean for uh, July, and we have two more activities coming up for this month. Uh, the first one is on August 10th, Raw Talk. Um, it says, with Grace Young Adults. And the second one is going to be Saturday, August 25th. Um, it's a Grace All Family Fun Day for the entire church, and it's going to be at the Bahamas Youth Camp. Now, um, I'm to advise you or to remind you that you are to see your elder, elder group leaders in order for you to make contributions to these events because, of course, we know um, they're not cheap. So in order for the church to put on these events, they need contributions from you. So if you haven't seen your elders group leader, if you haven't put some contribution towards these events, um, if you don't even know who your elder group leader is, beware. They'll, they'll find you today. So um, what's that? Or see Elder Stuart Kelly if you just want to be anonymous. Um, the second news highlight I'm going to give you is um, short-term missions. Um, if you are interested in short-term missions, if you still have a chance to um, join up, see Elder Andy Knowles or see uh, Jewel Major after church today if you're still interested in that. Um, the, the announcement says it's going to be at Camp Bahamas from August 12th to August 17th, so see a bulletin for more information on that. Uh, another news item is last weekend, I don't know if you noticed, a lot of the young adults were away. Well, we were at a retreat at the Adventure Learning Camp, and um, I must say it was a very encouraging, enriching um, retreat. The main speaker for the retreat was our brother Damien Sands. Um, you can give him a round of applause because he did a wonderful and excellent job at helping us to dig deeper, um, give us strategies to uh, look at the word closer and try to understand what, what the Bible is saying on, um, on every topic that it speaks on. And um, there were also guest speakers. Pastor Lyle stopped in um, and gave us a session. Um, Allison Sands stopped in and gave us a wonderful session. And we were also ministered in music by Andalino Sands. So um, it was a very good retreat. Um, young adults, do you agree? All right. Um, now what I'm going to do is the birthdays. Woo! Okay, I'm going to run through the birthdays. On Saturday, August 11th, we have Kira Bain. You can give them, you can give them a round of applause as I call them out. On Friday, we have Maureen Pustam. On Wednesday, we have Unita Barnaby, Dominic Ter Terry Thompson. Danielle Moore and Torre Musgrove. On Tuesday, we have Llewellyn Knowles, Kaja Russell, Kashan Munnings. On Monday, tomorrow, we have Christian Seeley and Crystal Cartwright. And today, we have Verna Goddard and Antoine Fowler. Give them a round of applause. We could have our jingle. Stand up if you're here. This is for you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you today. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you today. We love you, we love you, we love you to tell you today. We love you, oh, we love you. Happy birthday to you today. Okay, I didn't see anyone stand up, so I'm assuming they're not here. But either way, happy birthday to them. And I don't want to forget the anniversary, Donovan and Elizabeth Morrison on August 8th. All right? Woo! Thank you. Oh, there was something handed to me, and I, I did, it says Sunday, okay, Sunday, August 5, August the 5th, that's the day, uh, at Christ Church Cathedral, 4 o'clock uh, today, uh, you are being invited to join in the, with the Jamaican community in the Bahamas for a special service at 4 o'clock, but also on Wednesday, oh sorry, tomorrow, August 6th, there will be a family fun day at the Cricket Grounds on West Bay Street. 
all are invited. So, you know, go and have some fun with the uh, Jamaicans tomorrow. Good, good afternoon, everyone. This is a reminder. This is a reminder uh, that the children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren of a beloved member of this church will be celebrating her 80 years of life, and we will be having a special service in her honor, which is next Sunday at 3 o'clock, and you are all invited. We want you all to come. She loves this church. She loves all the family and friends, so we want you all to be there. I know a lot of you are going to be on vacation, and that's fine. If you're not going to be here, you could just let us know. But if you are going to be here, we would appreciate your attendance. Mom, would you please stand so they could see you again? Again. This is the lady. Okay, we have one more quick announcement. Uh, for those who are involved in the men's fellowship, our Bible study on the weekends, on Saturday mornings, I've been told to let you know to read over First John exhaustively. I think that's the right word. So, okay. <clears throat> Please stand for our offertory covenant. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your substance. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for a wonderful worship service. Lord, we just ask that you bless everything that we give to you today. May we give with a cheerful heart, and um, may it all to be to your honor and glory. Uh, to the spreading of the gospel and to give to those who are in need. So we thank you, Lord, once again for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Okay, while the ushers are going around, uh, let's welcome our sister Amano and our brother Dion, who will give us a music selection. Welcome her up. Good afternoon, Gray. If you're here today and you're going through a difficult time where you feel that there's no one in the world that cares or loves you, I'm here to encourage you to let you know that we serve a God that loves us unconditionally. Jesus is love. Oh, and 
this wisdom will be our helping hand. I know the truth and this word will be our salvation. We lift up our hearts. Oh, we are thankful and we're so glad. Cause Jesus is love. He won't let you down. Jesus is love. He won't let you down. And I know. Every time I hear her sing, I'm blown away. Okay, at this time, let's welcome Pastor Lyle as he comes up and gives us, and gives us a word from the Lord. Good afternoon, church. Let's uh, thank Brian 